Hi. Hello. Axel? Yes. Nice to meet you, Angela. Nice to Pleasure. meet you. I'm Charlene. Sure nice, nice to meet, meet you. you. Yes. And this is... Yes. We've, we've all met. We've... We've been head, head, head. Awesome food together and everything. So. Oh, what am I doing here? All right. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, I, I, I just wanted to because I knew if I didn't see them earlier that it's been the entire 15 minutes just bragging about them. Yeah. So I want to do that. Yeah, early. geeking out. Yeah. I know. I know, John. I get it. <laughs> Here we are on the Festival Daily Buzz. My name is John Wildman. I'm the editor in chief of FilmsGoneWild.com. Here with my bitch talk teammate, Angela Tabora. And on this segment, we're going to talk about the film Fantastic Machine, the documentary screening at Sundance. We have with us the directors, Axel Danielson and Maximilian Van Artrick. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay, now, this part of the show that we start off by having our, usually we have one director who's going to introduce our audience to the film. Um, I don't know if you guys traded off before you got here to decide who's going to do this, but who's going to tell our audience about the film? They haven't seen it as yet. Go, Max. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic Machine is a feature documentary, and it's made uh, almost entirely made out of archival footage. And it's about the history of the camera as a tool and uh, the, how we humans have used it since the 200 years it has existed, and how that use, in turn, has impacted our behavior and society at large. Ooh, I'm exhausted <laughs> just hearing that. I, I mean, we always, we're always in awe of any film that has arch archivic footage, but in your case, literally everything that has ever been recorded <laughs> could work in this film. Yeah. So how did you even pare it down? How many arguments did you have about what, re what real recorded image would suit the purpose best? It's just, it's incredible. We, we just threw a dart out in the dark room. <laughs> 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 what we hit, we use. No, it's... I mean, it's a, it's a good question because, uh, of course, there is such a vast uh, um, um, amount of material when you go into this topic. But so, so narrowing it down has been the the, the huge part of, of uh, doing the film. But I would say that uh, to uh, in, an advantage for us is that we don't have uh, like in the idea that we have to explain the, all the history of the camera per se. Uh, we uh, are obliged to explain our point of view uh, and those uh, things that are interesting in the interaction between uh, human beings and the camera uh, um, and that makes us free in a way we're, we're not doing something academic we're doing something artistic so we can mm -hmm. choose whatever we want so in you can say that the film has two layers that one layer is the from the first uh, image ever uh, produced to today's content industry. And one layer is only us uh, associating, I have a really hard time saying this word, associating? Associating it. Yes. <laughs> that works, that works. Uh, and, uh, material uh, to each other and mm -hmm. colliding material and, and do things that we think is interesting, you know, like uh, talking about perspective, talking about the framing, uh, um, the responsibility of being behind the camera, all of these things, the, the rhythm, uh, e economics that comes into to the system, the algorithms, the chemistry uh, uh, created in the brain because of images, uh, etc. Et et mm -hmm. You know, I, I was fortunate enough to, uh, to, to, to meet and talk with the two of you um, when we first arrived at Sundance, and uh, so you two know that I'm a huge fan of this film. Um, and one of the things that, you know, when I talk about documentaries a lot, I talk about the fact that I think they fall into a couple different categories. One is, I had no idea. The other is, I thought I had an idea, but I actually had no freaking idea. <laughs> and you guys fall, this falls in the second category, yeah. because of course we have an idea of, of how uh, um, photographic images um, influence us, maybe even manipulate us, in fact definitely manipulate us. Uh, and what is great about uh, Fantastic Machine is that, yes, you give us the context, the historical context, but you also bring it right up to our front door, and right up to our laptops, and you know, in, in terms of today, every moment, how we get sucked into delivering those images ourselves and how those images uh, you know, hit us. I would love for the two of you to talk about striking that balance between giving us a historical context but also making it very real and tactile. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, we walked on such a fine line in the whole production between how 
um, pedagogical are we right now and how dry can we be and how entertaining still um, should we be so I mean I think we found <laughs> the perfect balance uh, in the end but to go back to your question um, I think we all know somehow that photographic image impact us but you have to really find the good combination of examples to make it really you know, uh, to um, really make a sense of urgency. This is what we wanted, to make people go out of the screening and want to talk to, to each other about uh, this. Mm -hmm. And yet, we don't want in the film to say, we told you so, guys. <laughs> but actually, there was a lot of archival footage from those the last 100 years, where many people are raising uh, <laughs> this exact question already in the 20s and the 50s and the 80s, over and over again. When the uh, television arrived, for example, there is this um, uh, scene with the Irish president, who's the first person to inaugurate Irish public television. Mm. He's the first person on screen. And he, in his very first speech, it, immediately what he says is, well, this could be fantastic. We can educate um, the people and inform. But, you know, uh, <laughs> it could also lead to something, well, society will be even more polarized. So mm -hmm. he actually... Uh, compares it to um, um, atomic energy. You can use it for good, you can use it for bad. Mm -hmm. And that, um, yeah, that's something that came in history over and over again. So we are, in a way, merely putting all of this together. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where this sense of urgency um, becomes very intense. I also want to jump on something really quickly to Angela, um, in, in terms of how the two of you work together. Mm. Because, you know, uh, you know, oftentimes documentarians, you know, it's like, well, the, you know, he's the interview guy and she's the editor. Or, you know, or, you know, or, you know, or, or, or you, know, she, you know, she, like, you know, does the business sense and then, you know, he writes. In, in this case, you know, it's not like, you know, you guys were out there, like, you know, gathering footage or, you know, interview footage and stuff like that. You're really, like, putting together, like, a puzzle piece. So how did you two trade off on the responsibilities to make this thing? Yeah, so so um, we think uh, almost uh, uh, of ourselves as uh, uh, like dual core uh, computer uh, processing. You know, like we, we work uh, together in so many. When when Max has been talking now, I've been thinking of uh, uh, other things what to say, and you know, uh, so so at w um, in one sense we're, we're very very aligned, and and then in another sense, uh, for example, I'm much more impulsive. Uh, he's much more structured. So, so it's, we have these different uh, uh, abilities that we use. But one thing that we share in, in common that, that brought us to, together like uh, 10 years ago uh, and brought also Max into the context of Platform Production, the production company, where we have a, 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 a certain point of view, something that we think is interesting. And that is uh, human behavior. When, when, the catch, uh, when the camera captures human behavior, in a way, that's something that brings up the lust in us. Like, wow, look at this! It, it, it actually looks like this when somebody uh, um, uh, 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 almost uh, drowns because they don't want to get up on get help from people getting uh, up from the water because they're uh, ashamed of their uh, bathing suit or whatever. This is how it looks when you know. So we sh shared all this material for. <laughs> for 10 years, as long as YouTube has existed, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so we, we collected the material for this film du during a very long time, in a sort of a, collecting it in a bag, like this is fantastic uh, material. And the thing is that we always uh, have the same, uh, we know, when we watch an uh, archive clip, uh, we would have the exact same, uh, like, at that point, this material is, is, is interesting. So we have this same point of view when, when we think something is interesting yeah. uh, and, and we try to use that, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think this film for me was really just a mixed bag of emotions and I was confused a lot. I, I mean, I, you know, you see this footage of, of Hitler, you know, and with the editor and you, your stomach kind of turns and then you see little kids impersonating Bruce Lee and I'm like, oh, I'm happier than I've ever been again, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I feel like uh, you do this great job of kind of showing all the angles. There's this line, uh, to preserve an illusion, certain elements must be kept hidden. And that kind of really hit me. And, and it's like, what do we do with this? And I, 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 you know, is it more bad? Is it more good? But ultimately, maybe it comes down to us and our ingestion of it and what we do from there. 
Exactly, and um, what we hope this film will lead to is, uh, I mean, a revival of the discussion around media literacy. Because the more we are aware of such things, for example, like perspective or framing, or that um, an image can be considered like an illusion, that you always have to remember, well, some, some things that didn't fit in the interest that that person wanted to convey are have been put <laughs> to the side. And if there would be a second camera uh, mm -hmm. taking it from another angle, you would see that. Mm -hmm. And this is something that we are very engaged in, this uh, media and information literacy, what is actually a UNESCO program uh, since a couple of decades, I think. And it will be really try to worldwide push for an, an effort for citizens to be more informed. Because at the end of the day, it's a question of democracy. I mean, we for a long time have been living in a text-based society, and now we very much live in an image-based society. But while we still learn how to read and write in school, our own texts, others' texts, and analyze and be very critical of text, we're not putting the same amount of effort with image. Mm. So we're still kind of, you know, this tool, even though it has existed for 200 years, is still kind of in its infancy. We're still trying to grapple how, what kind of regulations should there be, what kind of ethics should be formulated. You know, it, 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 I, I, was, it, I was laughing to myself thinking about this as, as looking at who we're going to be talking to today and, and reminding that it's going to be talking to you guys. And, you know, there, there's this comic that, that's passed around uh, recently, and it's like someone um, showing someone in, in the past, like, a cell phone. And going, you know, this, this amazing thing, we can have all the information that's available to us at any time at our fingertips. And you go, and what do you, and what do you use it for? We watch cat videos on it, yeah. right? Yeah. And, you know, and and I, and I was thinking about that, thinking about your film, that that that, that it kind of crystallizes, kind of what you what you so you point out so well in this film, mm -hmm. that you know that that you know, our development of using uh, the photographic image, you know, the more technology advances and the more we we, we get access to it, um, it's the world opens up to us. And yet, our base thing kind of always takes it to a lowest common denominator because yeah. we can't help ourselves yeah. because we're kind of <laughs> animals in a way, right? Yeah. yeah. And 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 I would love for you guys to finish because we, we're going to have to wrap this up pretty soon. But I would love for you to, to talk about that because again, the two of you literally went through everything mm -hmm. and to, to put this together, and you know, and and so at some point, <laughs> I wonder the conversations you guys have. What the hell is wrong with us yeah. as people? <laughs> I, I mean, uh, I, I, we have this uh, exactly these things when you know we, we're um, lacking some image or some scene, and we say, "Ah, oh, uh, can you do the YouTube thing today?" And it's like, oh, "Fuck!" Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, you, and then, and then uh, five hours later, you're like, oh, "I'm not coming up from the rabbit hole." Because you know, you know, so we're all humans. I mean, we're all humans, and and uh, it's all about uh, um, algorithms and, and chemistry. I mean, this is the beauty of the, uh, and danger of the photographic image is that it, at the same time, it's capturing exactly what's in front of the hole, uh, the, the reflected material uh, in, uh, in front of the hole. If it's uh, Elvis Presley being a sea captain uh, in the 50s, or if it's, uh, we're taking a shot out this window right now, it's uh, representing exactly how it looks like. And at the same time, there is always somebody behind it that wants something from us. Mm. So, so in mm. our point of view, it's like we're in the beginning, as Max said. We're in the beginning. Um, we're very uh, uh, like the teenagers uh, uh, when it comes to the um, possibilities of, of the camera and the use of it. Uh, and, and if you compare to food, uh, if you go 40 or 50 years ago, you would, there could be anything in the food. Today, it's... Everyone is like want to read like okay. What's in this? Mm -hmm. I want to know what's in this because mm -hmm. I want to know what I put into my body mm -hmm. And it's the same with with the images So I think maybe in the future if we if we continue this there will be like okay I, I want to know what this is and then you need the tools for this and we want to to give some of those tools uh, No answers, but some tools to to see uh, the world uh, around us well, listen, this film is a must-see. It just is. Um, in, in fact, I can't wait uh, to I can add the Blu-ray to my DVD collection, my, my, my library. 
because I know there'll be some extras in there that I want to see. <laughs> uh, but again, the film is Fantastic Machine, uh, documentary screening at Sundance. We've been talking to the directors, Axel Danielson and Maximilian Van Ertrick. It's been great talking about this film with you guys. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Thank you. <laughs> you guys are great. You're great. Yeah, yeah, this is so, so fun. Much, yeah, yeah, this is. We, every time we get to talk about this, uh, <laughs> thank you. people who are interested, I, it's just with great. people like you, it yeah. didn't yeah. become uh, so it's much fun. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, I, that reminded me, John's last comment reminded me, my favorite part was um, when you talk about how people rate movies five stars, but those aren't the ones they watch. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, Citizen Kane, my favorite film. Yeah. But I really watch Adam Sandler movies it's like every day. It's, it's just such a... the broccoli versus yes. the yeah. candy. Yeah, yeah, it's just like what you want to appear yeah. as versus what you really are. Yeah. Yeah. It's we're just so like funny. We're all like this.